Today we're talking about the Rhino guitar plugin by Aurora DSP. So, the folks over at Aurora DSP were actually really nice and they sent this plugin over to me to review and do a tutorial on. So, I'm going to give you my unbiased opinion on it and I'm going to let you guys hear it in a couple different instances and I'm going to do a full overview of the plugin and all the parameters in it so you'll know if this plugin is right for you. So if you guys want to learn more about the Rhino, stick around after this introduction. Welcome everybody, I'm Dan Spencer and I am the Audio Sorcerer. So this is the channel where I teach you how to perfect your audio recording, mixing, and mastering skills. So before we get to the video, make sure you guys smash that like button. Please subscribe and hit that notification bell to know when I have new videos coming out. So without further ado, today we're talking about the Rhino Guitar Plugin by Aurora DSP. So, when I first saw this plugin, I initially thought this was more so for heavy metal or hard rock guitarist. However, I can tell you that is not the case. This plugin is pretty much like a Swiss Army knife of guitar plugins. It can cover your clean sound, your crunch sound, and your drive sounds very well. So it works across the board when it comes to genres. And as you guys know from me, yes, I mix many genres, but for when it comes to making music, I mostly only make pop and pop rock music. So I can tell you this guitar plugin actually works very well for those genres. Now, in this video, I'm going to let you hear what this plugin sounds like on a little driven picking part I wrote, and then kind of go over the plugin and show you all the parameters in it. And then I'm going to let you hear it in a real world scenario that I'm actually using it for on a new song I'm making. It's kind of like a 80s synthy pop song with an anthemic big overdriven guitar in it. So you'll get to see it in a couple different instances in this video. So with that being said, let's get into it and let's do a plugin overview. All right, so let me let you guys first hear this little guitar part without the Rhino on it, and then I'll let you hear it with the Rhino on it with the particular settings that I decided to use. All right, so let's give it a listen. All right, cool. So that's the guitar part that we are working with. A little sloppy, but don't judge. So let's add the Rhino to it and let's give it a listen. All right, cool. So I'm really loving that tone and you guys can probably imagine with drums and bass behind that, it would sound pretty cool and make for a good song. So I'm not really going to go over the settings that I have on this right now. What I want to do is actually go over the plugin. So I'm going to close out of this here. Let me add a blank instance of it here so that we can kind of start from scratch. So let me add in the Rhino. All right. So this is what it looks like when you first load it. And I will say it's got a pretty slick interface. And what I like about it, it's very different. It doesn't look like all the other guitar plugins out there that have your kind of amps and your guitar pedals and stuff like this. This is a whole different looking thing and a whole different way to look at a guitar simulation plugin. So let's first look at the in section over here. Now I do want to mention if you want to expand any of these sections, you just go to the particular box you want to expand and hit these up down arrow things here and it expands it like that. So in our input section, we have smooth, normal, and hot. Now, these are different ways to handle the incoming signal, okay? So for smooth, this will gently roll up high frequency, okay? This is good for bright instruments, so that's the smooth setting. Normal will not touch your signal at all. And then hot is actually gonna give you a boost with a 2K shelf, okay? So it's going to brighten up your instrument and give it some bite. So that's what these do here. Uh, you have a gate, which you can turn on or off with this button here, and you can set your threshold using this fader here. We're not gonna use a gate with this, so I'm gonna turn it off. 
You also have your attack and release for it here. Um, this is your input gain, of course, under input. And then over here, you also have a high pass filter. This is nice to have on the input side and then your slope for it. So we're actually gonna enable it for this particular sound. And we'll do maybe, we'll do like 120-ish. How's that sound? Okay, well, we can't do 120, so we'll do 100. That's the highest that it goes. And they'll do a slope of 12. Okay, so the highest that goes is nine. So uh, that obviously doesn't let me do the parameters I wanna do, but that's okay. So they're basically having it set to what they feel is best, which is perfectly fine. So that is our input section here. So what I wanna do is I wanna play the guitar part, and then I'm gonna switch between smooth, normal, and hot, because that's really the main things within the input module that you're gonna hear a difference within, all right? So let's give it a listen. All right, cool. So I think those changes were pretty obvious. I thought Smooth definitely took out some of the high end and I think the hot, you can definitely hear that 2K shelf boost. So that is our input there. As you can see, there is definitely a lot of drive initially when you load this plugin. I actually had to turn down the drive here at the bottom before I even let you hear this because there was too much. <laughs> so we'll get to this module next. So let me close this. So yeah, that's our next module here, which is our pre. So let's open this up here. Pre, of course, is preamp. So this section here is really where you're gonna define your sound and hone in your tone, okay? This is where you're gonna decide whether it's clean, crunchy, or driven. Now across the top, you got these four little dots, and these are your preamps. So this one over here, starting at the left, this is the red one, and this is the Riviera Knucklehead. And this is considered the most versatile of the four. And this is what you're gonna to wanna to use for your clean and crunchy tones. Now the yellow one here, this is the Conford Roadhouse 30. And this is basically your tube distortion sound. And this is gonna be great for modern rock tones. And then this one here is a modded Mesa Roadster. So this is gonna have really high gain to it. And this is gonna be great for really heavy bottoms and really rocking music. And then this one here, which is the purple one. This is the Victory Kraken. And this is the most aggressive one. So I would imagine if you're doing heavy metal music, you probably wanna use this one, okay? Now down here is your pedal board section. And the first one is called Scream. And I'm assuming most of you can guess what that is. Yes, the Abanez Tube Screamer. So that's gonna give you a really nice distortion sound there. Now the Brute here, uh, this is described in the manual as adding a ridiculous 23 dB boost with tweakable bass and treble, okay? So there's not really a whole lot of information to it. So we'll just take a listen to it later. And then you got your fuzz sound here. And then the push is actually a compressor, which is actually really good. I had to use it on the song that I was talking about earlier to get nice sustain on overdriven chords. So great for that. And then you have the amount of each right there, okay? And then over here on the right-hand side, this is your input drive section here. This allows you to get more drive. And then you can also blend it in using the mix knob here. And then this button here changes depending on which preamp you have selected. And it basically gives you a different option per preamp, okay? So you get a couple different options per preamp, so that's pretty cool. And then at the bottom, you got a high pass filter again. Let's see how high this one goes. Ooh, we got 300 here, that's pretty cool. And then we got our little EQ here with low, mid, and treble. And then we got a low pass filter. And I know this one goes pretty low because I used it before. And I actually like to roll off a lot of my electric guitars around 8K or 7K, depending, all right? So what we're gonna do is I'm just gonna put this thing on repeat and I'm just gonna start playing with this here so you can kind of hear what it does. And then I'll probably choose the sound at the end that we can kind of, you know, use going forward. All right, so let's give it a listen.
quite cool. So I kind of like what I chose there. That's actually a little bit different than what I had in my initial selection I played for you earlier. And I chose the red preamp there and I added a little bit of brute to it and I did it on the bright setting here. So it's, you know, somewhat cleanish, maybe crunchiest, just with a little bit of, you know, drive to it. So I'm digging that. It's coming through clean enough for you to hear the notes and that's really what I want. So we'll stick with that. But, you know, I think you guys get a good idea of all the different tones that this can create by me going through all this here. And they're really good. I really like what this is doing here and I really like the tones it's creating. So that is our pre-section. Let's move on to the EQ section. So for the EQ, you got four bands down here and then the lower and upper ones are shelves. And then over here, you have a match section. Now, I would never really use the match section, but what this does, it allows you to match the EQ of another guitar part you may have recorded. And then you can match the EQ of that and basically load it into here using this match section. So matching EQ to me is a little gimmicky unless you're using it in mastering, but it's here if you want to use it, okay? So for EQ, it's pretty straightforward. You got your gain per band, you got a Q, and you got your frequency selection, okay? So that is the EQ module. All right, so next is our effects section, and we have two. The first one is made up of flanger, chorus, and phaser, and the second one is made up of delay and reverb. So let's open up the first one here, FX1. And I'm just gonna play the guitar part here and just kind of mess with these here so you can kind of hear what they do. All right, so let's give it a listen. Right, cool so those are our flanger chorus and phaser effects and you may have noticed that when i was cranking up some of the parameters on the flanger and chorus things started to get out of tune and that is not uncommon so you do want to use those particular effects subtly to get a good sound all right so let's move on to fx2 and let's talk about our reverb and delay so under delay we have two different options we have echo and delay so echo is pretty straightforward. You have your time setting and you can sync it to the tempo. You got feedback and space. And then for delay, you have three different options. You have classic slapback and ping pong. And you can also set the time and also sync it to the song if you want. And then you have the feedback. And then you got a mix knob up here. And then for reverb, you have the classic reverb sound or the convolution reverb. And then if you have any actual files, you can load them in here but it does come with a couple presets under here. You got chamber, dense, hall, plate, and room, and then a couple sub presets underneath these categories. All right, so I'm gonna play it now and I'll let you hear what the reverb and delays sound like. So let's give it a listen. <laughs>
right, cool. So those are some really nice delay and reverb options in there. And those are what I decided to choose for this here. I just chose a classic delay with a 1 8 setting synced to the tempo with a feedback 0.3. And then I went for the convolution reverb with a room setting of one second. All right. So I think it sounds pretty good for just setting it pretty quickly here. But yeah, you have a lot of options in here to really dial in a nice delay and reverb sound. So I really love the section. And let's move on to the PWR slash IR. So let's crank this open here. All right, so this is the last module within this plugin that will allow you to shape the guitar sound. Now across the bottom left here, we have Prez, Rezo, and Hot. So Prez will allow you to adjust the 8K region. Rezo will allow you to adjust the 120 region, and then Hot will allow you to adjust the 1K region. Now Flat will add no additional power amp characteristics. Basically what you hear is what you get. Studio is a combination of Flat and an API preamp tonal characteristics. And then Live will be a two preamp characteristic with less mids and a low and high range bump. So if you want to add some more characteristics to your sound, you can adjust these. And if you want to add in custom IR, which is impulse response files, you can simply hit this plus button right here and you can load them in right here. Now it does have some preset impulse response files built into this, which is this section right here. So you have rhythm, cleans, and leads, and these refer to what's above here. So if I change this to like cleans, you'll see that these change, same with leads. If I change this manually to something else, this becomes custom, okay? And then this middle section here allows you to do a, a blend between the different impulse responses, because essentially you have four. So this is essentially a microphone, they say. So I can move it more towards IR2, IR1, IR3. I can do dead in the middle. So you can create the blend that you want. So what I'm gonna do now is we are going to listen to the guitar as we've been doing, and I'm going to play up these sounds so you can hear what they sound like. So let's give it a listen. All right, cool. So I'm definitely loving that. I think we got a really good sound there. So I definitely brightened up the guitar a little bit. We pulled off a lot of that low end there. And uh, I just think this particular impulse response sounds great for cleans. And then I like it on impulse response too. So that's what I like. So lastly, let's move on to our output section here. It's pretty straightforward. So you got your tight section here, and it's basically just a multi-band compressor that is handling frequencies between 80 and 250 hertz. And then you got a limiter, and then you got the release for limiter, and you got your output gain. So that is pretty much the Rhino in a nutshell. And if you don't want to dial in the tone yourself, you do have presets up here, and they are pretty good. 
And I should mention you do have a tuner right here because every guitar plug needs to have a tuner. And if you don't like dark mode, you can have light mode. So you definitely have options in here. So yeah, that's the plugin. And before I let you go, I did promise you I was gonna let you hear this in a real world scenario. So I'm gonna open up a different Pro Tools session here and I'm gonna let you hear the song I've been working on. So we'll be right back. All right, and we're back. And this song is in its pretty early stages, but uh, I wanted to let you guys hear it anyway. So this is the Rhino settings that I'm using. So if you guys want to check them out here, maybe use them in one of your sessions, feel free to. So let's give it a listen. All right, so that's what I got so far. It's not even mixed, no mixing has been done. So, I mean, it sounds pretty good so far. So yeah, that's uh, the Rhino in a real world scenario. And of course, I will definitely let you guys know when the song is actually finished so you can actually hear it fully mixed. But that is my review slash tutorial on the Rhino guitar plugin by Aurora DSP. This definitely gets my stamp of approval. I definitely really like this guitar plugin and I will be likely using this in a lot of sessions to come. So I want to know what you guys think. So leave a message in the comment section below and let me know. And if you guys like this plugin, I do have a link in the description below where you guys can go purchase it. And if you guys like this video, give it a thumbs up. Please subscribe because I'm making this content for you and hit that notification bell to know when new videos coming out. So with that being said, until the next video, I will see you guys later and peace out.